Hi Brawlies, Marvin here from TechBeerall.com where we do unboxings, reviews, and sexy B-rolls. And today I'll share with you the easiest way to build your own custom mechanical keyboard tailored to your personal preference. This is good for both beginners and enthusiasts as it is super easy to achieve while having a ton of flexibility when it comes to further customization and improvements down the line. I'll make it as simple as possible for beginners while providing enough details for our fellow enthusiasts out there. With that being said, let's get into it. Alright, so let's take a minute and discuss why you would want to build your own custom mechanical keyboard in the first place since it is easier to grab a pre-built one off the shelves. Well, the thing is, we all have different preferences when it comes to mechanical keyboards, and there's a ton of things to consider when buying one, like the design, the construction, switch choices, keycaps, and a lot more. And more often than not, we cannot simply find one that fits all our needs in just one pre-built keyboard, so we tend to buy try and resell and buy again just to find the right one for us which is not very cost efficient right so building your own could be more expensive at first but trust me when i say that it is way satisfying and since you built it yourself there's a chance that it will stay on your desk for a while unless of course you get hooked and you start building custom keyboards left and right which is what usually the case with enthusiasts getting hooked down the rabbit hole but that's a story for another day so yeah building your own custom keyboard allows you to choose all the different components based on your personal preference and now I'm going to teach you how to build one, and it's actually quite simple. All you need to do is get a bare bones keyboard, which means it is basically an already built keyboard but doesn't have switches and keycaps. In our case, I chose the Geek GK61 with a hot swappable board. And this is the easiest way to do it because you don't need to solder the switches and it is super easy to replace them once your preference changes over time, which it will at some point, so this is very cost effective. And then I have here a set of keycaps and a set of Gateron yellow switches right here. And that's about it, you only need 3 different components to start building your own custom keyboard. Alright, so let's unbox all of these first. Let's start off with the Geek GK61. The packaging is pretty straightforward, just a black box with the Geek logo at the center. Inside the box, the first thing you'll notice is the universal manual, so it is also applicable to other models like the GK62 and the GK64. It is written in both English and Chinese. Aside from that, we have a nice braided and gold-plated USB Type-C cable right here with a Velcro strap. And then we have a generic switch puller and a plastic keycap puller right here. The good thing about this is that the keyboard comes inside a nice velvet bag so it is well protected. And since this is relatively small, you can easily bring this anywhere with you as your personal custom keyboard. And not only that, it is also protected with a plastic cover as you can see here. Okay, so the reason why I picked this particular bare bones GK61 is like I said, personal preference. I like things made from wood and this fits right in. So yeah, like I said, with a custom keyboard, you can pick a particular component that fits perfectly with your personal preference. Now at first look and touch, it looks really good with a decent amount of weight to it. And of course, with wooden construction, it is super solid without any flex on the body. And as you can see here, it has a nice white backplate that looks really good with the wooden material. Flipping it on the front side, we have a better view of the wood patterns and the thickness of the bottom housing. Flipping it on this side, we can see that the bottom housing is a little bit angled. And turning it on the back side, we have the recessed USB Type-C port on the left side and as per my testing, it fits a wide variety of USB Type-C plug. Now turning it all over at the bottom, we have 4 rubber feet and as expected with a wooden housing and a 60% form factor, we don't have an adjustable stand. This is usually the case for 60% keyboards so this is no surprise. So now we have all the things we need here, we have the backplate, the PCB, the housing and the stabilizers. So again, this is the Geek GK61 hot swappable board version. And before we move on, let me just share with you some of the most common budget hot swappable boards that you can get out in the market right now, just to help you find one. Aside from the Geek GK61, we also have the GK64 and the GK66 for a 60% form factor. And then we have the Raklam Ang Pro and the Techware Phantom Elite for 10 keyless form factor. As for full size, you can check out the Techware Phantom Elite full size version. These are all using universal socket, which means you can pretty much use any Cherry MX style switches. There are other hot swappable boards in the budget category like the Rack Lamang Lite, Rack Elis, Rack Tandus, Techware Phantom L, and Techware Spectre. But they are all just using the Otemo hot swap board and are only limited to Otemo switches. Now going back to our build, aside from the bare bones keyboard, we need a set of keycaps, again depending on your preference. In our case, since we have a wooden keyboard, I chose the Mars Colony set of keycaps, which should perfectly match the aesthetics of our keyboard. So it has blue, brown, and I guess cream colored keycaps. This is actually a full set with 162 keys and the reason why I chose this other than the theme is that I want to show you guys that there are a set of keycaps out there that has a ton of different sizes of modifiers which is perfect for custom builds especially for builds that have an unconventional layout. 
So essentially, you have everything you need here. And usually, the most common set of keycaps is just around the standard 104 keys. As for this Mars Colony set of keycaps, it features the sublimated legends and features an XDA profile. If you want to learn more about those features, you can check out my review of the Moon Landing 165 set. Now for the budget alternative, since this Mars Colony set that we have right here is quite expensive, you can just grab some generic double shot PBT keycaps which I also did a review that you can check out here. And lastly of course we need a set of switches and what we have here is the Gateron yellow switches. By the way, all of the things mentioned here you can get from Bangu.com. You can check out their website and look for different bare bones, PCBs, keycaps, switches and other components of a keyboard for your own build. Now the reason why I chose the Gateron yellow is that I really like the smooth travel of Gateron switches. And I like the relatively light actuation force of the Gatern Yellow in particular. So this is the SMD version with black bottom housing and clear top housing for the illumination to pass through. But you can also get this in other versions such as Milky and Ink but that is a little bit more advanced for most beginners and a topic for another day. I'm not sure how many switches I have here but I'm sure we have more than enough. Now before we build this, I think it is important for me to show you how this bare bone is built so that you can have a better understanding on how a keyboard is constructed should you choose to build your own from scratch like choosing a bottom housing, backplate, PCB, and stabilizers. So after removing the screws, we can simply pull the backplate out and as you can see, the PCB is screwed on the backplate itself. Looking at the back, we can see that this board uses Gateron Universal socket and like I said earlier, it is compatible with most Cherry MX style switches. And while we're at it, let's measure the thickness of the backplate and the PCB for those of you who are interested. The PCB has a thickness of around 0.06 inches or 1.5 millimeters, while the backplate has a thickness of around 0.05 inches or 1.3 millimeters. The socket itself consists of two sockets for the switch pins, three holes for the plastic pins for both PCB and plate mount type switches, and the SMD or surface mounted LED. For this particular board, we also have a physical microphone right here for the audio visualizer feature. As for the wooden bottom housing, we have some nice brass standoffs. A cutout probably for battery for a wireless version and the cutout for the USB Type-C port. I can also see here other holes for the standoffs. So there's a possibility that you can move it around for compatibility with other boards. But I'm not 100% sure about that. Before I forgot guys, the thickness of the keycaps by the way is around 0.06 to 0.07 inches or 1.5 to 1.8 millimeters. I'm really sorry I forgot to change the mode on my caliper. <laughs> and while we're at it, let's check out the weight of these bare bones. So the wooden case alone weighs around 387 grams and the PCB and plate weighs around 260 grams for a total of 647 give or take. Alright, so with all the components checked out, let's finally build this which is actually pretty straightforward. You just have to install the switches carefully by the way, making sure that the pins are perfectly aligned because if not, you're going to damage both the switch pins and the socket itself. So it is very important to make sure that the pins are straight and if ever you feel like there's some resistance when inserting the switch, hold back and check it again to make sure. Now, using a hot swappable board like this has its advantages and disadvantages. The advantages are you can easily swap switches out just in case some of them becomes faulty at some point or if you simply want to try other switches. And the disadvantages are the switches are a little bit wobbly due to the fact that it is not solidly attached to the PCB and that the hot swap socket themselves can also suffer from wear and tear due to frequent replacement of switches. But don't worry much about that because I'm pretty sure before it even becomes loose, you've already considered building or getting another board. So just enjoy it while you have it. And once you're done finding the best switch for your preference, you can now consider building your own custom keyboard with soldered switches. And just a quick tip guys, when buying switches online, make sure to get extras as you don't know what can happen during shipping and so that you have extras for replacements down the line. Now as for the keycaps installation, there's not much to it. All you have to do is gently insert the keycaps on the stem with just enough force to get it in there without much pressure to not damage the keycaps. And for an unconventional layout like with a 60% keyboard like this, you can refer to the manual or online to make sure you properly match the keycap placement with the layout. And there you have it guys, we now have our own custom mechanical keyboard with our preferred casing, layout, switches, and keycaps. And without all the technical details that I shared with you earlier, you can pretty much build this in just a matter of minutes. The total weight of our finished build is around 855 grams, which is quite heavy thanks to the wooden bottom housing. Now before we end this video, for those who are interested to follow the same path, let's talk more about the characteristics of this particular build. Let's start off with the switch of choice, which is the Gatern Yellow. Gatern Yellow has an equation force of only around 50 grams, which is relatively lightweight and I'd say right in the middle between the 45 grams red switch and the 60 grams black switch. This is linear which means there's no tactile bump or click and it just presses straight to the bottom. Now Gatern Yellow is considered to be one of the smoothest stock and mainstream switches out there 
and is ideal for gaming and typing especially if you prefer a relatively quiet switch. As for the keycaps, what we have here is made of durable PBT plastic with the sublimated characters that become part of the plastic, which means the legends will never fade away over time. The XDA profile is flat across all rows which means it is good for custom builds because you don't have to worry about the height of the keycaps. It also has a relatively larger surface area compared to most keycap profile. As for the bare bones itself, the stabilizers come pre-lube which is nice and though it still has some rattle to it, it's not entirely bad especially compared to other boards at this price range. Like I said, it also has a physical microphone for the audio visualizers which is quite unique again especially at this price point. The cutout for the Type-C is substantial enough and should fit most USB Type-C plug. And the wooden case is nicely finished with a smooth texture to it. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the simple build that we did right here. All the components perfectly match my personal preference from the colors, the materials used, up to sound and typing experience. Speaking of typing, I know some of you are waiting for it, so here's a quick typing test for you guys. By the way, if you want to learn more about the Geek GK61 keyboard, especially the performance and the software, you can check out my full review here. And now to conclude, the mechanical keyboard hobby is deeper than we actually thought. There are a lot of things to consider and sometimes it's kinda overwhelming where to start. And I also understand that a lot of you are not into custom build and just prefers pre-built keyboards, which is perfectly fine, there's no problem about that. But just in case you want to dive deeper into it, I am here to help you and we can dive in together as I am also relatively new to custom builds. Let me know in the comments below what other tutorials or tips you want to learn about mechanical keyboard so that I can share more information with you. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Make sure to check the full article link below and I hope you get a thing or two from this video. Huge thanks as always to Bangu.com. You can get all the components used in this build on their official website, link below as well. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you like this and please consider turning on the bell notifications so you won't miss our videos. Thank you and have a great day guys.